In our last lesson, we talked about the attacker's methodology. This time, we're going to talk about the ethical hacker's methodology and how you as an ethical hacker and penetration tester will follow the proper procedures to keep yourself out of trouble and give the customer what they need. So the ethical hacker's methodology is very similar to the attacker's methodology. The big difference is the first and the last step. We're going to include permission from the organization and documenting all of our steps and ensuring that all of our actions are reversible and that we don't harm our target systems. Because again, we're there to help them, we're not there to harm them. The goal here is to assess the organization's strengths and weaknesses and develop a security methodology for them to use in the future to prevent future cyber attacks. So here's just a review of the attacker's methodology. If you remember, we did our performing our reconnaissance, we scanned and enumerated the network, we gained access, escalated our privileges, maintained the access, and covered the tracks and placed back doors. Again, as we move to the right in our stages 3, 4, 5, and 6, our risk level went up of being caught. We had very little risk level in our performing reconnaissance and moderate risk level in scanning and enumeration. Now in the ethical hacker's methodology, we're going to add a new first step and a new last step. So it becomes an eight-step model. The first step is permission. You're going to coordinate with the, with the organization to ensure that you have the permissions you need. The permission is going to give you the ability to conduct the penetration testing on that network. You have to remember that hacking in the United States is considered a felony. You can go to prison for it. So if you don't have written authorization to probe the network, you're breaking the law. It's not okay for having uh, scope creep. You have to have what is in your letter. When you have the letter from the organization, it is in writing and it says you can scan this network. You can probe this network. You can do this, that, or the other thing on this network. Specifically, if you go outside those bounds, you could be held in court. Uh, you, could end up, you could end up being tried for hacking. So you have to be careful to make sure you do it. Remember, that written permission, that letter, we call that our get-out-of-jail-free letter. Kind of reminds me of Monopoly, where we have our get-out-of-jail-free cards. Same concept here. If you don't have that get-out-of-jail-free letter, you could be facing some serious jail time. So make sure you stay within the scope. The last step that we're going to add to this methodology is reporting. And again, at the end of all the fun and games of probing the network and stimulating the system administrators and, and stealing the data and doing everything that you were, you were told to do in the written authorization, you have to give them the output of this. And this penetration test is going to result in a report. It's the last step of the ethical hacking job. You compile a list of all the vulnerabilities you found, the methods you used to exploit the systems, you provide them recommendations for how they can fix things. Now the important thing here is you don't want to just give them a hundred page document with a bunch of vulnerabilities and a, and a big list of things to do. The best thing, best practice is you want to prioritize this from one to a hundred if there's a hundred items for instance. Because no organization has infinite amount of money. So they may only have enough money to do ten things. They want to know what the most important ten things are. And as we go through our scanning and our vulnerability assessment later, we'll talk about how you can prioritize those and figure out what is the most important things Based on your experience, you're going to be able to tell the organization, you should do this, this, and this first because they're going to solve the most amount of your problems. Remember, be clear, be concise, be useful. I recommend putting an executive summary in the first. Maybe it's two or three pages that tells them what the rest of your 100-page document is going to tell them. Um, but it just gives them the, kind of the bottom line up front. This is important. This is what you need to spend your money on. And that helps the organization bring that to their leadership to get the funding and resources they need to get them back on the right foot security-wise. So in addition to the hacker's uh, methodology and the ethical hacker's methodology, there are a couple other methodologies. Now, if you're just doing pen testing, you don't necessarily need to know these methodologies inside and out, but different organizations will use them. For the ethical hacker exam, you do want to know that these methodologies exist and some basics about them. So for instance, the NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, has their methodology, which is called the 800-115, which is the publication it comes from. It has four phases, planning, discovery, attack, and reporting. It's kind of a slimmed down model of the one we went through. Planning is kind of the scanning enumeration and reconnaissance all rolled into one. Discovery goes in, into the scanning and enumeration a little bit. Attack is where we actually do the attack, gaining access, uh, establishing our footholds, doing our exploits, and then reporting is the end to clean it up. The other one we have out there is called Octave, which is the Operational Critical Threats Assessed Assets and Vulnerability Evaluation. This is one that's actually put out by US CERT, which is a computer emergency readiness team. It focuses on organizational risk and strategic issues. It was developed by CERT and focuses on this inside knowledge to solve the security problem across departments in an organization. Another one that's out there is an open source one called the Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual, or the OSSTMM. It doesn't have a cool uh, uh, abbreviation like Octave, 
but it, it's, a, it's still uh, there nonetheless. And it has six parts, and they broke this down more into the areas of concern. Physical security, internet security, information security, wireless security, communication security, and social engineering. This will allow them actually to make metrics on how many man hours the assessment takes. So you can say, well, for physical security, we're going to need 10 man hours worth of effort. For social engineering, 20 man hours worth of effort. For internet security, 100 man hours worth of effort. And it helps you kind of go through the methodology that way. Again, though, for the basic penetration tester, the ethical hacking model that we've shown here with the eight steps is going to be sufficient for you uh, in doing your work. And that's just a real quick basics of the ethical hacker methodology. Uh, in our next videos, we're actually going to go through the steps one at a time as we go through the attacker methodology, learning the tools and techniques that we use to break into systems.